Hi there, it's Richard from OneSite Solutions. Uh, in this training module, we're going to be looking at the lead lag runtime module, uh, which is in a um, kit control underneath HVAC. Okay, so there's a lead lag runtime. So just drag it onto the wire sheet. Um, double click on it to have a look at the property sheet. Um, so you've got an in slot, you've got facets at the top you can change. Um, number of outputs between 2 and 10. Uh, runtime, maximum, sorry, maximum runtime. So this, for some reason, uh, defaults to six minutes. Um, so this is the amount of time the, the device is allowed to run, the maximum um, uh, time it's allowed to run before it changes over to the, another device. Um, feedback, so that's uh, the uh, pump DPS usually or an inverter signal saying that the device is running. Um, if, so if you don't get that, it's obviously going to change over and try another one. Um, and then that uh, the pump feedback delay is how much time you're going to give it to give you that signal. Uh, so that's usually um, around about 30 seconds would normally suffice if it's a DPS. Um, clear alarm time. So if something does fail um, and goes into an, a, a failed state, you can set this set at the moment one hour. Every hour it would just clear that uh, failed status um, and let it try again. So obviously you can change that to whatever time you want to. And then you've got the out slots and the uh, run times at the bottom. So I'll just save that and uh, go back to the wire sheet. So the uh, in would be uh, linked to your demand. Uh, your feedback will need to go to uh, my pump flow. Um, and then my output. My output one I can take care of. Uh, output two I haven't created the pump uh, pump two yet, so I'm going to do something here first before uh, I do that, just to save some time. And because I need to get these uh, these run times back in here, so uh, to get the run times back, um, we need to work out how long this pump has been running for. Um, so the easy way to do this is to add a discrete totalizer to it. So um, if I go to um, back in a kit control again under control palette, underneath extensions, there's a discrete totalizer. So to add it, I can just drag that up to my pump one enable. Okay, and there it is on my wire sheet now for my pump one enable. Um, so if I pin these down, I need to get to my lapse active time uh, or uh, numeric time. And my um, uh, reset as well. So uh, you can see there that the one I need is in milliseconds, the elapsed active time, because that. Um, so if I link mark this, I'll go back to my wire sheet, I can now link mark from my discrete totalizer uh, from my elapsed active time to my runtime A. So now I've done a link mark from the discrete totalizer inside this component back to this uh, runtime A. So if I double click on it, it would take me where it's uh, linked to. Um, so now if I uh, duplicate this and call it pump two, and then I can link that to my out B. And now I can uh, link, um, go back. To, so I can do this in the sidebar as well. So now I've got a pump to enable. Oops. If I right click on the discrete totalizer and link mark it and then go to my lead lag runtime. Now that I know what to do, link from, I can now go to my lapse active time uh, on my pump to discrete totalizer and link it to my pump runtime B. So now that's taken care of. I've got both of those runtimes going back to um, the lead lag runtime. Um, what is also quite useful is uh, is is the ability to um, uh, get to the the reset. So when when I right click on one of these components at the moment and go to the actions, I, I still have the actions of uh, my boolean writable, but I don't have the actions of the discrete totalizer which is the extension to this component. Um, so what I can do is something called a composite. If I uh, still on the right click menu, just click on composite. And with this, I can now get to my discrete totalizer or any, any object 
underneath it. Uh, and by double clicking on any of these uh, boxes or actions and, and adding to the right hand side, um, it will now add it to the component. All it's done is link marked it. If I if I follow that link mark, it's gone to this elapsed reset elapsed active time. Uh, but what it means now is when I right click on the actual component and go to the actions, I now have the reset actually as part of that um, that component now, not just part of the uh, discrete totalizer. I still have it there, but I also have it now on the actual component itself. So quite useful when it comes to doing graphics. You can uh, you can just get to that now rather than discrete totalizer to uh, reset. Okay, well that pretty much ends this uh, tutorial. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you have enjoyed it, please subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next one.